What is going on, everybody? It's Redbeard. We are here on Island Lake. Pretty, pretty fun one today. Got a big old aspen tree over here we gotta put down. Little birch tree right next to it. That one's gotta go on the ground. And then we got this balsam tree right behind me over here. And uh, we're gonna climb this one because it's kind of close to the house and it's entangled in these other trees around it. So just gonna put all these trees on the ground today, wrap it up and uh, get on out of here. So wanna take you guys along for the ride and uh, show you guys what we do. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Stay tuned. First things first, before we, before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, we wanna put a, we wanna put a nice solid edge on, uh, on our chainsaw chain. That way when we go out to start cutting, super efficient with the cuts that we're making. So first things first, grab a file, we hit our chain, put a little edge on it, and then we're good to go. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Keep on filing this straw. So we've got our saw sharp. We're just about ready to get going. But before we can get going, we've got to check for a couple things. Okay, first things first, eye protection on. So these are Z87 safety glasses, a hard hat to help protect me from any overhead hazards. I've got hearing protection. I've also got chainsaw protection. So these are chainsaw pants designed to stop the chain in the case that I, any cuts or, or I nick myself. So chainsaw protection, gloves, eye protection, hearing protection. We got everything we need. We got a sharp chain because a dull chain is more dangerous than a sharp chain. With that being said, we're gonna grab our saw, make sure we got a little bit of fuel in it. Topped off, we're gonna check the bar oil. Topped off, we're gonna go get after it. So let's go find these trees. All right, well, let's go look at these trees. All right, first thing I wanna do here, create a little bit of a working zone around this tree where I can work safely. Now the next thing I want to do is define my escape route and my safety zone. So <clears throat> those usually want to be 45s coming away from my fell line. So my fell line is going to be going right down this way. Oh. Part of me feels like this needs a throw line in it. So that's probably what we're going to do right now. Set up a throw line. That's what we do. We're worried about where things are gonna go. And that's what I'm gonna do right now, just so we can be sure. out today. We are ready to lose a layer. Ah, should work. 
that up over there we need to. Now, what we're gonna do, set that line up there. And we're gonna put a redirect out here. And we're gonna pull this tree down that way we know it's going right where we want it to go. Got a throw line up there. This pretty cool. So this is what we call progress capture. And the way this works is put the rope through here, run around this, throw this to here, boom, boom, boom. Put this on here, swing that through there. Okay. Now what we do is pull this pin, and what happens is when we apply this tension to this rope. This cleat is gonna hold, this cleat's gonna hold tension going that way. So now we can gather our slack here. And I can run this out back over to my tree. And I can pull this down from the base of the tree, which is kind of neat. So we'll show you how that works because we've got this progress capture in over there. We don't have to worry about this thing sitting back on us. So this is pretty dang safe right here. That tree is wiggling. So all this needs now is a face cut. logging. Don't ask me why I'm doing it right now. It just felt right. What will happen is when this face closes, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, when this face closes here, this will push off the stump. So this will push further out. Now it's kind of unnecessary in this particular situation, but uh, what, what it does happen is it puts all this weight out over the tree here. So we're gonna go ahead and make a back cut. A little bit of tension in this rope. That's pretty good. I'll just tip this thing over. There's no big deal.
cut. See if we can't put a little bit of tension in it. Yeah, I heard it cracking a little bit. Still want to go. We go recover our gear. Ah, might need a chainsaw. Let's see here. Oh, there it is. Nice. Pull this end out. So that worked well. Got one more flopper. One more flopper to do and then we'll go climb a little bit. Now that that one's out of the way, this one should be fairly simple dead. Put it right there. Let's clean out a little area here. Doing well, time to throw the saddle on. We're gonna do a little bit of climbing here. We'll go up there, take all these limbs off of this balsam tree right here behind me. And then we'll set a pole line and we'll pull this top of this stem down. Then we've got uh, another dead aspen tree over here. We've got a birch and a balsam over here. We're chugging away, knocking it out, and uh, having a little bit of fun while we're at it. Throwing the saddle on, this is my climbing saddle. That's what keeps me safe up in the tree. So when I'm climbing, and I don't use aerial devices like a, like a man lift or a bucket truck or anything like that, I just use my climbing equipment. And I actually prefer that because I feel safer being in a tree than I do with the iron and the stability of the soil and the ground and stuff like that. But I do make sure to inspect my gear regularly. I've got my saddle here. I strap in, inspect everything. We've got a couple extra things in here. I got my lanyard here, which is like a flip line. And then I got these spikes. In this situation, this tree is gonna go down. So we're gonna, we're gonna spike this thing. It makes it a little bit faster. I got a right and a left here. Jingle bangle bongo. Now, one thing I really like to do before I go up in the tree is do a little bit of site management. The reason why I like to do that is because you get up in the tree and quickly find out that uh, you wish that your stuff was a little bit more cleaned up. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna sort some of this gear out. Put some new stuff in here. Just like that, got a tidy, got a tidy little area here to work out of. So now 
I'm gonna grab this camera right here, take you guys with me. Boom. Check the battery, good to go. Okay, good to go here, good to go there. Now we just uh, get on up there. here I don't know maybe 25 feet we got, we got to get up here and get this top out so got a little bit further to go one thing you might have noticed is when I put my saw away I always put my chain brakes kind of become a habitual thing uh, that way you can't just grab that saw and accidentally hit your trigger I feel like that's been a beneficial item for business second thing you see me doing here is I got two tying points that means I'm just tying it up above me, working my flip line up, hooking that in as well. That way I'm just secure at all times. This thing is getting a little squiggly up here. So at some point in time, I'm gonna have to say enough is enough. 
pulling this thing down. I think it'll come up. Usually I like to cut pieces small enough that they don't maim and destroy me. Okay, I'm gonna check on that. that theoretically flop right out here all right now what i'm going to do do a quick throw in a friction saver because this balsam tree is going to put a bunch of sap on my line theoretically i could retrieve this thing i don't have to because i'm going to flop this tree over but speaking of flopping the tree i should also put my pull line on this thing as well which is probably Okay, to do after, I take this top out. We're gonna call that good. Oh yeah, good. Now we'll get up here. And, oh. Just like that. No problem. No problem, Mr. Sikorsky. No problem. Now, set this line. See, now here's, I'll show you what my problem was. Because the way that that tip was up here, tangled in with this aspen tree right next to it, I couldn't be sure that I could tip this thing where I wanted it to, so I had to climb up here. Pop that top out. Now that that's done, we're out of here. Time to get on down. The rest of this should come out fairly uneventful. Now we go down. Down to the last little, little nitty gritty here around both of these two trees. So I'm gonna go and make a face cut on this balsam and a back cut. Then I'm gonna cut the birch. Then I'm gonna pull them both down. So it should be, uh, should be a little interesting here, but we're ready. We're ready to rock and roll. Everything is, everything's ready to go. It's pre-tensioned. Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> 
That's that. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Oh, this is the one, huh? Yeah, we were right up in here. We lost our microphone for the camera earlier. And it was right there. I looked all over in here, couldn't find it. Neither did. That's cool. Glad I found it. I think. Oh. oh. So that is it. We uh, got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven trees down. And uh, they all came down, no problem. Gotta pack this gear up. And uh, I'm sweaty. I'm, uh, I'm not thinking about swimming. You know, honestly, I'm not really sure if there's any better feeling than working all morning, building up a sweat and then coming out and going swimming in the afternoon. That's what we about to do. Woo, doggy. Yeah. Yeah. Love it out here. I don't like that. Now it's time to go get a pizza. All right, this is the part of the job that we call pizza. Get the island lake in. So, if you guys need hazard trees removed or you've got some wildfire mitigation that you want some help with, we can help you. All you gotta do is go to the website, redbeard.work, fill out the form, we'll give you a call soon. All right guys, I'm Sean, everybody calls me Redbeard. See you on the next one.